So if there's a, a mutation, this can lead to the misfolding of the DNA, and, and then this can lead to the autoimmune diseases. Welcome to Arthritis Now. Today we're talking to Dr. Yuri Chepolev, who's a researcher at Cincinnati Children's Medical Center in Ohio. Today we're learning from Dr. Chepolev about genetics and specifically how genes fold to fit inside of our cells and how if they fold incorrectly, this may lead to the formation of various diseases. We're excited to have you today. Thanks so much, uh, it's my pleasure to talk to you and explain my uh, research. Wonderful. So um, my first question for you is, what got you interested in studying psoriatic arthritis? I work in the Department of Rheumatology, but uh, originally I'm a basic scientist interested in uh, molecular mechanisms of the cell. So I decided to apply my basic science knowledge to, to the disease. You received a grant for 2015-2016 year from the Arthritis National Research Foundation as well as the um, National Psoriasis Foundation, correct? Yes. And so can you tell us a little bit about what receiving that grant meant to you and meant to your research? First, uh, so personally, it is a uh, huge uh, uh, moral support. <laughs> so it's very uh, satisfying when your uh, research is uh, being funded. Uh, and recognized. For example, NIH funding for the, for the psoriasis is quite scarce. My laboratory is generating now data, doing experiments, we will apply for uh, bigger funding, studying psoriasis, arthritis, cluster of autoimmune diseases. And we will expand our work uh, to more loci in the genome. So now it's not only three genes that we will go to, say, 30, 40 genes and study them, uh, and study how the genome is misfolded around those genes, and, and, and how it leads to the uh, disease states in, in these autoimmune diseases. Can you explain to us what the IL-23 pathway is and how it relates to psoriatic arthritis? Um, IL-23 uh, uh, protein is uh, it, 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 it's secreted by uh, uh, some uh, immune cells, like uh, uh, dendritic cells, on the skin of the patients, they, they contribute to the inflammation. They secrete IL-23 protein, and, and this leads to a cascade of events that result in inflammation. And, and so that's the reason why it is uh, important to uh, study IL-23 uh, uh, gene and protein and, and the pathways. You know, as far as studying genes and studying genetics, do you mind explaining to us when studying genetics, some of the complexities of it? You know, there, there's the, the variations of structure, function, variation, distribution. And can you explain to us um, sort of the difficulties in studying genetics because of all those variations? Um, yes. Uh, yeah, so human genetics uh, studies uh, of, the, of psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis, and other complex diseases reveal that the majority of genetic variations occur in the regions of the genome that are not coding for the proteins. These are the, the regions that regulate when and uh, where the genes are activated. Since those regions contribute 99% uh, of the genome, and the genome is huge, it uh, consists of Trillion letters, it's, it's huge. And so uh, in the 99% of the genome, that's where the genetic variations that contribute to the disease sit. And, and a lot of those variants have very small effect on the, individually they have very small effect on, on the disease, at, uh, etiology and the disease progression. And, uh, and so it's essentially the gen these genetic variants are distributed across the genome uh, and it makes it hard to uh, find where they are located. I can't even imagine beginning or trying to begin to study the human genome. So how, how do you even approach it when you're talking about billions of letters that you're looking at? Yeah, so um, we, that, that, that's uh, one reason why uh, I, I, I sort of focus on, on uh, particular regions of the genome. So There's 3 million base pairs or letters regions of genome around genes involved in the IL-23 pathway. For example, the IL-23 protein is composed of two actually, subunits. 
two proteins, and each of them is encoded in, in a separate gene in the genome. So uh, I'm studying uh, uh, sort of a, a big region around those genes, but it's, uh, it's big, but it's not a whole genome. It's about one uh, thousand of a genome. Wow, it's still, <laughs> that's still a lot. <laughs> so by focusing on one part of the genome, you're then able to better look at it and better understand kind of the variance in there. It's also uh, both economically and also scientifically feasible, but the whole genome is a little bit harder to do. The kind of studies that uh, I'm doing, uh, it would be pretty hard to do the whole genome. It makes sense. <laughs> you need uh, many more lifetimes to be able to do that. <laughs> Uh, can can you explain to us a little bit about, uh, besides the genes, some of the things that affect genes? So you talked about those variants, um, maybe some of the triggers and, and how genes sort of relate to one another. Can you explain to us why some of those differences make or may or may not make a difference in your research? Uh, well, one of the, the, the main mechanisms of gene regulation is uh, uh, the, the DNA looping mechanism. Uh, so uh, the regulatory regions in the, in the, in the genome uh, uh, are bound by the special proteins called transcription factors, and, and these, uh, this leads to the uh, looping of the DNA and activation or, or, or deactivation of genes. And so this uh, whole um, uh, cascade of events uh, leads to uh, either, uh, I mean, could lead to the dysregulation of the genes, and, and this uh, eventually um, contributes to the disease, uh, uh, etiology and progression. So may I ask, do things like illness, uh, you know, severe bacterial infections or even trauma, do they have the ability then to sort of trigger some of these genes or to uh, make them perform differently in the body? Definitely. So the, the dendritic cells that secrete IL-23 protein, these cells, they, they actually, the cells that detect the bacterial components of the bacteria and engulf those components inside, and then they present when they are surface uh, the components of the bacteria, and, and this leads to the uh, triggering of the, this inflammatory cascade. Oh, that makes sense. So basically you're saying that once they've, the genes have sort of been asked to deal with one infection or one event, then they may sort of, if I'm understanding correctly, then keep kind of uh, working towards something that necessarily isn't there. Is that an easy way to put it? Yeah, it's a s similar to uh, uh, sort of like, a, not similar, but yeah, so like a allergy uh, type response, right? How might studying genetics improve the quality of life for psoriatic arthritis patients? Like in the future, more more uh, targeted therapies uh, may become possible as a result as a result of uh, those studies. And the other one is maybe develop a more personalized, very personalized therapies uh, because different uh, uh, different individuals uh, have different uh, genetic uh, genetic makeup. And, and that uh, uh, might lead to a different response to the uh, therapies. And so uh, that, that might be... Uh, uh, so more specific treatments for specific patients really being able to improve their disease and therefore quality of life overall. So, Yeah, it's interesting. These conversations that I'm having with a lot of our researchers, we keep coming back to precision medicine and this idea of instead of just blocking something across the board and having sort of these negative side effects come along with it, we're really looking at trying to hone in on something more specific, more precise uh, to treat, you know, the, either the specific patient or that specific disease a little better. So it's, it's, it's encouraging to hear, um, especially as a patient who, you know, has lived with a lot of these side effects and you have to weigh out, you know, do you deal with the side effects and is the medication working well enough? So can you explain that a little bit more about the, the new specific technologies that you're using to look at genetics um, related to psoriatic arthritis? A number of these genetic studies identified uh, sort of uh, very, uh, I would say, approximate locations of the uh, genetic variants. But these approximate lo locations are like, could be uh, tens of thousands of uh, letters away from the real locus, and it is not known where exactly it's located, so only approximate. 
my laboratory studies how DNA folds inside the cell nucleus. And because this folding is impo important in gene regulation, and, and by by uh, if you know how, how it how it folds or how it this folds, then you, you would be able to identify uh, in which uh, genes interact with the uh, which uh, which uh, other loci in, in the genome. Well, this is this is a way of uh, identifying. Uh, the causal genetic uh, uh, loci in the genome. Um, well, I basically wanted to show uh, a few a few uh, slides uh, to illustrate my research. So here's a picture of T cell, uh, it's an imu immune cell interacting with the uh, dendritic cell. The dendritic cells are the, the the immune cells that engulf the pathogens and present them to the other immune cells, uh, such as T cells. These cells secrete proteins called IL-23, which ha helps to stabilize some types of immune cells called Th17 cells, and, and which then are uh, involved in the inflammatory response in the psoriasis of the skin and arthritis at, at the joints. So this IL-23 uh, uh, protein is... Uh, uh, composed of uh, two, two, uh, two components, P19 and P40, and these two components are encoded in the human genome by two different genes. And so this IL-23 uh, then binds to the IL-23 receptor on T cell, which then promotes the chronic inflammation and autoimmunity. The DNA in a single cell, in, in a human cell, if you st stretch it out, it is uh, about uh, two meters long. And this long DNA is somehow folded in a small cell nucleus. This folding is important for gene regulation. So shown here is this picture of a chromosome and the, the DNA is wrapped around proteins called nu nucleosomes. From the DNA is a, is a template that stores information on making uh, RNA and from the RNA, the proteins um, made. So shown here is a sort of a cartoon picture of the gene and its surrounding regions. So DNA loops and the regions that control gene activity uh, are brought into uh, the vicinity of the, the gene and this leads to the activation of the gene. So if there's a, a mutation or sort of a genetic variant DNA locus that contains the gene regulatory information, this can lead to the misfolding of the DNA and, and then this can lead to the aberrant activity of the gene, uh, genes involved in the, the uh, immune, immune regulation, and, and this can lead to the dysregulation. So you're, you're saying basically that if the DNA doesn't fold correctly within, within inside the cell, then that is essentially um, producing psoriatic arthritis or other diseases potentially. That's right. Ah, oh, that's really interesting <laughs> to think about kind of how that has to fit inside of a cell um, and how that can be the cause of our diseases. Uh, that's a, a completely new way, really, for me to think about diseases. I'd like to thank Dr. Chepilev for chatting with me today about his research in genetics and how they relate to psoriatic arthritis. For future episodes of Arthritis Now, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here and join the conversation using the hashtag CureArthritis on Instagram and Twitter. We'll see you next time for Arthritis Now.